All right, let's move on to the NECC. It's our final stop. Uh, this conference, I think, is more, it's tougher to predict mm -hmm. than the other three because there are less known quantities. Who do you have winning the NECC? I got the newbies. I got Garrett. Uh, you know, return in the NACC, like you said, after a stint in the ACAC. Uh, return a lot um, on both sides of the ball, and I just think it's it's a it's a program that that is it's an established program. It's going back to the NACC where it's familiar with the opponents to an extent, and and I just like what Coach DePew does up there, and I think they're going to come back and kind of put their stamp on the NACC and win it their first year back. And I think size wise, they've got some players. Uh, Bo Davis, six two, six three at the linebacker position. Tommy Reno. Coach raved about this kid, Tommy Reno, 6'4", about 2'10 on the defensive line. Just loves him. Um, they've got some players. They have to replace Noah Follett at quarterback. But I asked Coach DePew, is it nice to kind of come back and, and get to scheme against different offenses and defenses? He's like, I mean, I'm kind of used to it. You know? <laughs> uh, I'm kind of, I, I know these teams. I know what they've done historically in the past. And I think he's, he's ready for the challenge. And I think these Garrett guys are ready for the challenge as well of a new conference. Yeah, definitely. You see a lot of new faces, a lot of different schemes and stuff, and it's a, lo it's a little more difficult for players, obviously, than coaches. The coaches know the teams in and out schematically. But it'll be interesting to see how Garrett does. I like him. You know, Fairfield and Lakeland and Busco will still be strong, but Garrett is just is that program that has succeeded. We've, we've seen it year in and year out in the ACAC, and I think they're going to continue that trend in the NECC. That brings me to who you have as your second team, because once I got past Garrett, there's a number of teams that you could slide in there, in my opinion, in this conference because the Fairfields and the Lakelands, yeah, they're good year in and year out, but they lose a ton of people. Right. But Busco loses a ton as well. Busco loses almost near everybody on defense. I have only about three starters coming back. They lost both the running backs. But I, I, I seem to put Busco up there still because of that wing T offense. It's just so tough to play against and defensively. And, you know, if you aren't disciplined and fundamentally sound, you're going to get torched in that, in that with that offense. So, I like the Eagles second. I know Lakeland and Fairfield. And Fairfield put up a ton of points last year, almost 38 points per game. So they could drop after losing a lot of people. But Busco is just one of those established programs. They're going to just replace guys, especially at running back. Man, they'll 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 another Nicodemus will come out of nowhere yeah. or something, you know, to to carry the rock. So I got Sarah Busco second. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to say because you take a look at. Uh... Kyle Matthewson, we're like, oh, what are they going to do without Kyle Matthewson? And then Jason Nicodemus, five foot six, three hundred pounds of muscle, bursts on the scene, has a couple great seasons. Last year they used the two-headed monster. Bo Barkley is, I think, the name you're going to hear a lot on the Friday Night Highlight Zone this season as the guy that took the rock a lot for Churubusco. And I'm like you, I just until they prove that they can't plug in guys, yeah. You know, they're going to be up there as far as top three in the conference. Who do you have third? Because I also had Busco second. I just have Fairfield back at three. Uh, they do lose a lot, but that's another program that just seems to, to reload with guys. And it seems like that Fairfield-Lakeland battle is always interesting toward the end of the year each season, so mm -hmm. I have Fairfield three. All right. My team to watch is Eastside. Uh, Coach Eschbach, talking to him, they, they were excited last year because they beat Garrett in the train game, and then they kind of let it go to their heads. And, and the players said that. The coach said that, that they kind of took it easy, like, oh, we're going to roll in conference after beating a team like Garrett. Well, that didn't happen. P.J. Dean, I would put him up there as one of the top two or three players in this conference. They're going to use him in a variety of different ways. And I think they're more settled at a number of positions. Uh, who's your team to watch as far as this conference? I like Eastside, too. Uh, you know, talking to them at Media Day and, and stuff like that, I, there's just a lot to like with that team. And it is one of those teams that they, they had a good year last year, bring enough guys back that maybe they take that next step this year. Anybody else that we should keep an eye on in this conference? I know Prairie Heights is... I think they just named a new head coach a couple weeks ago. I think West Noble is also a team that's interesting to watch. But to anybody else besides, you know, Angola's got a new got new leadership. Anything we should really watch for as far as some of the other teams in this conference? I really want to, interesting to see how Angola does, just under the new regime and, and how they develop. I think there's a lot of pieces there that they could put together and compete. Maybe is it this year? Is it next year? Who knows? But I think it's a team on the rise. All right. Uh, final question before we wrap things up. Anything that you're specifically looking forward to about this season, just in general, of Northeast Indiana football? Because I think there's a lot of talent coming back, but there are also some question marks in some key positions. I think it's that next crop of stars. We lost a lot to graduation and to injury when you look at Justin Tranquil from Carroll. Who are those guys that are going to step up, raise their game, and, and, and be 
stars week in and week out for their teams because they're, you know, look at a lot of teams and we really don't know who's going to star and who's going to lead these teams. So I think the first couple weeks can going to be interesting. A lot of intriguing younger guys as well to keep an eye on. All right, and it starts week one next Friday night. We're going to preview those games next Monday on Inside the Zone. But join us every week where it will be myself and Justin talking high school football. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Monday.